Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service here at Holy Trinity Towers. It's lovely to have all of you here with us in church and also our um, streamed congregation. It's good that you've joined us as well. Welcome to you all. I'm going to start with our formal greeting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Would you sit for a moment? Thank you very much to Tim and Hill for just giving us the notices and getting us started. It's, um, it's lovely to be here. This is a special Sunday in the sense that it's the Sunday that we call um, Gaudete Sunday. It's to do with the word Gaudete, which is Latin for rejoice. Um, and this is the Sunday when we think about joy. Um, in a moment, I'm going to light the Advent candle um, for this Sunday. Um, and it's the, the pink candle, um, the candle for joy. So I'm going to do that now. You will need your um, Advent wreath prayers. So if you've got that little piece of paper, perhaps you'd like to get that out. We've lit the first two candles, the one for hope and the one for peace. Today we're lighting the third candle, the candle of joy. This should be the easy one, except it's not lighting. <laughs> this should be the easy one, because joy is all around us. The children, the lights, the music, the gathering together. But how often do we let our preparations or our memories push joy to the side? Joy is like an underground spring that wells up within us. But joy is also a choice, an attitude. Like a muscle, it needs to be exercised. So today, we open ourselves to joy, trusting that God has already planted it in us. Let's pray together. Loving God, we open ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you made us. You created us for joy-filled hearts and lives. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained, but must be shared. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice, for God has created you with the capacity for joy. We will find what makes us joyful, and make that our gift to the world. Trust in God's good will for all creation, and open yourself to God's gentle, transforming love. We will welcome new possibilities in our lives. We will offer ourselves to God's goodness. We will go forth in hope and peace and joy. We come now to our prayer that prepares us for worship, prayer and preparation. So let's continue in prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your own name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to our time of confession. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, 
forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect special prayer for this day. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm now going to invite Andrew to lead our reading as well. Our first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to the end. The Spirit of God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is taken from the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 20. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the word of, words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you in time. May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, glory to you, Lord. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know. The one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of God. Praise be to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Will you please be seated? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Gaudet Sunday, Gaudati Sunday, however you care to pronounce it, but Gaudet Sunday or Rose Sunday, and hence the rose or pink candle we have just seen lit. What a wonderful moment in these strange days and the rush of preparation for Christmas. Of course, we shouldn't be rushing, but also preparing ourselves spiritually for the celebration of the birth of our Lord among us again and again as a baby. That theological moment of new realization and countercultural confusion when we welcome the Saviour of the world as a newborn baby. And I say that again, the Saviour of the world as a newborn baby. Gaudet, as you will remember, Elizabeth mentioned, is uh, the Latin for rejoice. It is the first word sung in the introit of today's Mass, or a service of Mass sung in Latin. So why do we allow this Sunday of rejoicing in a period of penitence? After all, we don't do such a thing in Lent. Well, it is really to do with recognizing what we mean by penitence and allowing the fulfillment of God's gift within us. The goal of fasting is not to win divine approval but to open our lives more fully to God's grace. It was Augustine who offered a vivid image of the purpose of self-denial. He said, supposing that God wishes to fill you with honey, if you are full of vinegar, 
where we have put the honey. What the vessel was carrying must be emptied, poured out. The vessel itself must be cleansed. And so, while it is entirely appropriate to fast, to deny oneself, to prepare, it is also entirely appropriate to allow for God's grace to shine, to enter and to reside, and so to be celebrated. Now in our readings today, if you listen carefully, we heard the word rejoice twice. Also in Psalm 126, should we have heard that psalm today, which is today's psalm, making up three times. And interestingly, there is something else we hear three times in our Gospel. John denies three times that he is the Messiah, or Elijah, or the Prophet. You will of course remember the other occasion when there are three denials as we come towards Easter. And three is one of the major numbers in the Bible. Well, John, somebody we know very well, of course, in his stories, but he is a fascinating character in the Bible. If we look at him in the round. Many in our modern world, and especially in these difficult times, feel that there is a need for heroes. And there are heroes and there are saints. A hero, perhaps, is one who does great stuff, is recognised for it, and is set up on a pedestal. Today, in our society, there are many heroes, and we think of those, particularly in the NHS, who we ascribe the word hero to. But we must include also all those who continued and continued throughout this year to work to maintain our easy lifestyles. If you don't think your lifestyle is easy, I invite you to look elsewhere in the world. A saint, on the other hand, is something different. I quote from a book called God's Advocates. A saint is just a small character in a story that is always fundamentally about God. And John the Baptist is a great vision, if you like, of this distinction between hero and saint. Initially, his actions, his life, might seem heroic. After all, he abandons the comforts and securities of his community to live in the desert, eating locusts and honey. His proclamation of a baptism of repentance will always make him the subject of concern to the priests of his time and those with authority and power in the church. He is offering something that will, in fact does, usurp their authority. He is challenged throughout his life and is fearless in his proclamation of the truth. Even to Herod, this eventually costs him his life. His story, though, and all that he has to say, is fundamentally about somebody else. He reduces himself to the part of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. And among you stands one whose sandals I am not worthy to untie task of the lowest of the servants in the household. Perhaps here is our most powerful lesson for today. In a world, a society of self-dependency, the self-created authority, where when things go wrong or are not happening as we might wish, generally we blame somebody else the government, the authorities, but never ourselves. 
Perhaps the humility of the saint we know of as John the Baptist is our lesson. Here is the one who, referring to our Augustinian description, is empty of the vinegar of life and stands ready to be filled with the honey of God's grace. As we live through this particular Advent, I would add, through the challenging times in which we find ourselves, and yet enjoy the offering of rejoicing this Gaudet Sunday, let us also remember the great prophet, perhaps the greatest saint, John the Baptist, and his koinonia, his self-emptying, to be only a vessel of and for Christ. Then, and truly then, shall we too be ready for the celebration of the coming of the baby saviour of the world, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. you to stand as we affirm together our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Loving and merciful God, we pray on this Gather Day Sunday that you would lead us to rejoice, to give us hope and peace. This Advent, Lord, we pray for the Church. We admit that we feel disappointed about the necessary cancellation of so many services this Christmas. But we do pray that your Spirit will work within us. We pray for all those who will worship here in this place this Christmas, and for those who join us online. May each one feel your welcome and receive that message of joy and hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> this Advent, Lord, we come to pray for our country. We pray this morning for Boris Johnson, 
for those in our government. We pray for those who are tasked with still negotiating over Brexit, for all those who make decisions which will affect our lives. May those choices be made for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this Advent we pray for those areas in the world where life isn't as easy as it is for us here. We pray for those, those parts of, the, of, our, of our world where poverty brings despair. Those places where oppression leads to fear. Those countries where warfare brings grief. Loving Lord, we pray that you would bless all those who suffer iniquity with your justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This Advent we come to pray to the Lord for our communities, for our families, for our friends, and for our loved ones. We pray this day for families who can't see each other this Christmas. For families who live in poverty. For those where relationships have broken down. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this Advent we come to pray for the sick. This day we bring before you Cynthia, who is in hospital. We pray for Drew, Drew Dennis, and for James Jones, who are recovering at home. We pray for all families where there is illness, for those who will be grieving this Christmas. Bless those who seek your comfort, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this Advent, let us pray for ourselves. May we find our spirituality renewed as we respond with joy to the timeless wonder of God coming to us as one of us. We pray that our Saviour Christ might bless with faith in us each one of us who seek to be his disciples. So in God's power and peace and his presence we place ourselves today. Holy God, protect us by your power. Provide us with your peace and awaken us with joy to your coming. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you like to stand as we share the peace? May the God of peace make you holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer that sign of peace to each other. Peace be with you.
There is rain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on a hillside and now reunited on this table in red and wine. So Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. We pray together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For we is your living word, through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of all women to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand of time. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life giving spirit, and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because you prepared the way of your Son Jesus Christ by the preaching of your servant John the Baptist who proclaimed him as the Lamb of God, our Saviour. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of the power and might, heaven and earth are for the beautiful Lord, for the sound of the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zion, come to sit on you. I accept our praises, Heavenly Father, for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, we want that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave it to them. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with his bread and his cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will one day. Great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink, please hope to get to the presence of your divine majesty. Renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we will be stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, but we all share in one body. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, my mother's sin. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, my mother's sin. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, God has peace. Draw near with me. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith. We thank you. We do not presume to come to this short day or that of the Lord. Trust in your own righteousness, but in your manifold great righteousness. We have not worthy so much as the head of the prophet of the Lord. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always our mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so that we the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and through his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body. And our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Amen.
we give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts that we have received. Kindle in us the power of your spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I invite you now to stand to receive God's blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen.